sometimes though, when I work with teachers around the issue of differentiation, particularly if you think about it in a RTI context, um, they are in setting, teachers are in settings where they're expected to administer sort of formal uh, assessments frequently. And um, that takes up instructional time. And, and you know, it's a, it's a real issue in, the, in many of the schools that I've worked with um, because teachers are losing maybe a fifth of their small group instructional time to the assessment process. So in, in the, um, some of the work that we've done, we ask teachers to sort of keep abreast of what the kids know and are able to do using uh, we call snapshots or checklists of what they notice the kids are able to do and not do. And to have one of those snapshots for the group that they're working with. And then by looking at what their observations tell them based on those snapshots, they can think about regrouping so that the children that they're working with are better matched in terms of what they're ready, what they already can do and what they're ready to learn. Right, I think that's what a formative assessment means, right? It, it means that you are, you're aware of the scope and sequence, the skill progression that your students need to go through um, in order to be successful readers and you have checklists, or maybe you're using a curriculum that actually has this good formative assessment embedded in it. So it's not a separate test, you're actually embedding it in your instructional routines. That's right. ideal. We can win back a lot of instructional time if we don't have to stop teaching to assess. Right. Yeah, and a, a lot of schools are, are uh, doing universal screening. If they are, it needs to be short because the point of a universal screen is just to determine is a student at risk for a, a reading disability or not? And if so, that might mean they get followed up, not by the teacher, but by someone else to do more extensive assessments. I, I'm particularly thinking of situations where there might be comorbid is the term they use. Uh, attentional memory problems, developmental disability problems, those kinds of things uh, would require further diagnostic assessment. Yeah, well, personally, I would prefer that we not think about kids as being at risk for um, reading disability or these days dyslexia at these very early points in development when the, many kids just haven't had an opportunity to learn about the reading and writing processes. And then that's an area that has been particularly concerning to me over the last several years where, you know, because we don't know what an early sort of uh, concern about the child's reading uh, progress and going forward, we don't know what it's going to mean to parents and teachers and children if children at a very young age are, are already sort of designated as per perhaps going to have a, a serious reading problem. We know from early intervention research that, you know, most kids with properly targeted and focused and responsive instruction are going to accelerate and not need long-term support services. Right, I think that's what the term response to instruction, some people use the term exactly. response to intervention, but it should be response to instruction means you, you may screen and see someone looks uh, like they're at risk based on that screen, but in fact, they maybe didn't attend pre-K. So you give them the chance to actually learn and some kids will really grow fast and they don't need any pull out kind of intervention or any kind of labeling. I agree completely yeah. with that. 